Today on AFOL TV, we're doing a face reveal. You're gonna to get to meet me. I'm gonna answer your Instagram questions and it all starts right now. What's up guys, it's great to finally meet you. I know you've been wanting me to do a face reveal for a while now and I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Actually, I know you have a lot of questions because I got all the Instagram requests and I'm gonna to get to know you guys. You guys are gonna to get to know me and if there's any questions I don't answer, feel free to ask them in the comments below. So let's get rolling. So as mentioned, I'm gonna go through all the questions you guys asked on Instagram. And if you're not familiar where those came from, I did an Instagram story a couple days ago asking you guys, what would you like to know? What would you like to know about AFOL TV? What would you like to know about me? Where the inspiration comes from? Everything from our instructions to our YouTube videos to our website, all of that and more is coming right now. And we started off with the first question, where do you get your inspiration? And this is one of my favorite questions. Um, I actually get asked it a lot. And one of my favorite things to do, it's super easy, hop in the car and drive around. I live in Southern California and there is tons of inspiration all around me. A uh, perfect example is the lifeguard truck that we released a couple weeks ago. That I saw just driving around one day and I thought, you know what, this would be a really cool tutorial and a really great addition to the website. So by far, my number one thing for finding inspiration is just driving around. You guys know that I like realistic builds. I don't do a lot of sci-fi or other categories. I try to focus on real things, things that I see around me, and the number one place for me to start is by driving around. So another popular question that I get all the time is what software do you use? And I don't necessarily know if that means what software do I build the creations in, what software do I edit with, what software do I make the YouTube videos with, but I'm gonna give you a quick rundown um, of everything. So for the creations themselves, and especially for you know the instructions, the actual post to Instagram and all of that, I use Bricklink Studio. And if you're not familiar with that, I actually did a tutorial, which I will link up above here at the top of the video. Uh, but it is a 3D modeling software that is specific to Lego, and it allows you to build creations, not only extremely fast compared to how you would if you were using physical bricks, but allows you to try things out before you actually purchase the bricks. And when it comes time to buying the bricks, you can buy the exact pieces you need through bricklink.com by just simply uploading the studio file. This is one of my go-tos. Actually, it is my go-to. It's my base go-to. I mean, this is what I start with. Now, as far as taking you know what I create in that and actually posting it out onto the internet for you guys all to see and enjoy, there's a lot more that comes with it. So it does start in studio, but then it goes through either Lightroom or Photoshop, depending on the image quality that you know studio renders. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is pop it into one of those and then kind of retouch it, make it look a little bit more realistic before actually putting it onto Instagram. And then I use Instagram's controls in and of themselves to edit the photos even further. One other thing that I use Photoshop for is to add the watermark. If you guys aren't aware, there's a lot of companies you know elsewhere in the world and probably even here in the United States, stealing people's mocks and recreating them um, literally piece for piece. I mean, I've seen Chinese companies copy American <laughs> designs and make them into their own and sell them as something on their website. So by adding a watermark, it's just an extra level of protection. And I highly recommend any of you guys to do the same. So that's Photoshop and all of that. Now for the video editing and YouTube, I use Premiere Pro. And if you've noticed a common theme here, it's True, I do use pretty much Adobe software for everything outside of Bricklink Studio. But on top of that, I use a Sony Capture, um, it's called Remote Capture, and I use that for filming with the camera so I don't actually have to hold it while you know doing the creations and building them in front of you. I can control everything from that app and it allows me to you know build with my hands and actually make things for the videos without controlling it um, you know with one hand and, and building with the other so that's great and then i think you know for the most part that's pretty much it so moving on to the next question so what are your top three categories of builds um man this one is tough i love skyscrapers i think that is probably where it all started. I just kind of wanted to start playing around with the software and see what I could make skyscraper wise. Uh, when I was little, I wanted to be an architect and I'm in real estate now as, as my full-time job. Um, but you know, architecture has never really left me as a passion and it's something I've always been interested in. So being able to build skyscrapers and figure out you know, how the inner workings all go together and try to make it as realistic as possible to what you see in real life is one of my favorite things to do. Outside of that, I really like vehicles. It took me a while to get into this and I, need, I had some help early on um, for the minifigure scale ones in particular. Those were challenging to say the least, um, but my cousin helped me out and a few others um, and that's really you know, come in handy. 
And then I think the last one would probably be micro scale or any of the retail builds that I've done. I really like recreating stores um, and I think that's just a really fun category to uh, focus on. If you guys haven't seen it yet, the Supermarket series came out recently. It's been a huge hit. And thank you everybody for all of your awesome comments, uh, likes, shares, and just kind of spreading the word about it. It's been you know, hugely successful and I couldn't have done it without all you guys. If you haven't seen it yet, you can click the link up above. Great series, it'll teach you a lot. And there's a lot of just great little tips and tricks uh, within that building. Okay, so on to the next. Um, I had a question, it's, it's kind of a longer question, so I'm just gonna summarize it. They're asking me about workflow and how I crank out a video every single day. And this has been the biggest challenge. If you guys haven't ever done a YouTube video or if you haven't ever gotten into YouTube, let alone create things for Instagram, it is a lot of work and it's very time consuming. Luckily, I've watched a ton of YouTube tutorials and really try to immerse myself in, in speeding up my timeline to get things out and create content for you guys. So for me, I'm able to do a YouTube video in about 30 minutes. And when I first started, that was eight hours. So back you know, in February of this year, when I first put out the first video, it took about eight hours to make that. Now I'm down to you know 30 or so minutes. Um, on top of that, you know, the designs, they can take anywhere from an hour to a couple hours. And I work a full-time job. So during the day, I am fully working that job. I don't touch this stuff because I just don't have time, quite frankly. But when I get home, I'm able to work on it and on the weekends. So what I do is I make the designs on the weekends. I do all my research on the weekends. I learn new tricks and tips on the weekends, watch tutorials on the weekends, basically just get everything ready for, you know, the week ahead. Yes, I have a social life. <laughs> my girlfriend will tell you the same but it does, you know, get in the way sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, when I'm working on the weekends, I, I, try to, I try to set it up for the week and I try to basically, I have an idea of what is gonna be a great build and what might just be an okay build. I never try to put out just okay builds, but you know, some builds just do better than others. And you kind of have an idea in your mind what those will be. So I try to stagger it online with a really interesting build and a complex build. And the next one might be a simpler one, like a micro scale or, or something a little bit simpler. Um, so what I do is I line up the builds for the week on the weekends. I make the videos in about 30 minutes each night after work, you know, while I'm just sitting in bed watching TV. I'll upload them to YouTube that night, do all the keywords, do all the research, make sure everything is good to go for the morning, you know, the titles, um, the end screens, the comment cards, everything. Everything's ready to go, right? And then in the morning, right before work, I'll actually post it, I'll post it to Instagram, but everything's preloaded, it's ready to go. So it's just a click of a button, and then you just share from YouTube to Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that, it spreads the word, it gets you out there. People love it, they like, they comment, they share, they do everything, it's great. Super easy, gets it out of the way. And realistically, you know, if you add it up, it's what, 15 minutes in the morning, 30 or so minutes you know, in the evening, 45 minutes daily, and then on the weekends it's a couple hours. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's literally my workflow. Okay, so next question. When are you building your city? Okay, this one is tough, and there's been a lot of setbacks. Um, truth be told, it's actually been a really tough summer with coronavirus and everything else going on. At first, we moved a lot of things around for um, quarantine to kind of bring everybody under one roof. and. Um, in doing so, I actually left my condo for a couple weeks, thinking it was going to be a short quarantine, not knowing how long this thing would drag out. And during the time that I was away, there was a water main break, and my ceiling actually collapsed because the unit above me had a huge water leak. So with construction and everything else, and remediation going on this summer, um, it's really put a damper in the timeline as far as getting that up and running. I have been stockpiling some things, you know, and getting ready for hopefully what will be a nice, awesome city to come in the future. You know, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. It's gonna be awesome. Like I have so much cool stuff planned and so many cool videos to come out with that. Um, but for now, unfortunately, it's, it's gonna be put on hold. And that actually segues into the next question, which is when can we see the collection? And it's kind of the same thing. A lot of the collection is actually in storage right now because I just don't have any space. I mean, I'm literally um, out of space right now. I'm crammed into this room until, you know, the construction's finished. And really until that's done, you know, the mold and everything else is remediated from the water leak. I'm, I'm kind of out of space and, and, and stuck with what's here right now. So I'm trying to make the most of it, do as many videos for you guys as I can. Um, but 
you know, for now it, it is what it is, unfortunately. So another question is what's my favorite set? And this one's tough because um, as probably a lot of you guys know, you know, growing up in the 90s, I used to love Legos when I was little. And truthfully, I, I didn't even touch them or, you know, wasn't around them for many years. You know, when I went off to college, when I was in the working world, well, still am in the working world, but um, it wasn't until earlier this year that I really just rediscovered the passion for it. And so, you know, that, that whole block of, you know, call it early 2000s to pretty much now, um, I missed out on a lot of those sets. I've gone back and, and tried to familiarize myself with it and learn all of those, but, you know, I wasn't really um, around those for a while. So, this one is tough. Um, I would say it's between the roller coaster set. Um, that thing is a freaking beast. I had a blast building it, but it took forever. I don't know if you guys have tried it yet. Highly recommend it, the Creator Roller Coaster set. Tons of fun, but wow, that took a long time. Um, so that one, or probably, you know what, the, the Friends set, I gotta admit, I loved that one. Uh, my girlfriend and I watch it all the time. We love that show, so. Um, that would probably be up there as well. Uh, I got another question. What are your other hobbies? And interestingly enough, a lot of the other hobbies play pretty well into this. Um, I picked up photography when I was really young and I've always loved it. I used to do stock photography and drone photography and um, it, it played in really well with my real estate career because obviously there's a lot of photography in real estate. So I've, I've learned photography throughout the years and it, it's been really applicable to this as well as far as product photography, um, making videos for you know YouTube, filling out the website, which if you guys haven't been to yet is www.aflstore.com. Nice little plug. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's a great side hobby. And if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. You know, I always love talking about it. I shoot these videos on a Sony A6500. And um, I already told you guys the editing software, but you know, I, I use a mix of gear to kind of make these things. I have a little turntable for when it's the close-ups of the products. I have a lot of different lights that I use, a light table. Um, all that comes in handy and it's definitely a fun side hobby. So another question that I got was, why did you start the channel? Um, if you guys have been following along since the very beginning, I started this back in February of 2020. And you know, at the time I was kind of just looking for a little side hobby to do. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot going on. Coronavirus wasn't a thing yet. And I thought this could be kind of fun. I had been doing, you know, some research into different hobbies and categories. And when I came across Lego, I remember how much I used to love it back in the day. I thought, you know, why not hop back into it? My girlfriend and I actually went to Target and we bought the Ferrari sets and we started building them and we just had a blast. So I was like, so I thought, you know, this would be really fun to get back into. And it just so happened that it coincided perfectly with coronavirus. I mean, it, it couldn't have happened at a better time. I literally set this thing up and then two weeks later, everything shut down. And all I have, you know, work is pretty much dead stopped. Everybody thought we were, you know, just on hiatus for a couple weeks. And while everybody else was binging Netflix, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna learn as much as I can about this. Um, so the timing, you know, really worked out. However, then it started to take a little bit of a different turn where work really slowed down and it, you know, everybody was kind of getting worried, you know, where's the next paycheck? How's this gonna keep going? And then my concern kind of shifted. It went from learning to, I need to figure out how to monetize this, which is where the store came in. And thank you so much to everybody who has bought instructions. Um, your support is literally what has funded the channel and kept this going. So you guys have been a huge help and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Like you don't understand how much that helped. It literally helped me pay my mortgage one month. So um, thank you, thank you so much. But switching back, you know, I think it started out of a passion, um, developed a little bit more into a business back in like March and, and April, you know, when, when times were getting tough, but now it's evolving back into a passion where, you know, work is picked up, it's, it's steady again, and I'm focused on that during the day. And then at nighttime, I get to kind of just relax and do this, which brings a lot of joy. And honestly, it's, it's just fun. So I love it. And that segues into probably what I'll end this with, and that is where do you see the channel going from here? Um, I think a lot of that is kind of up to you guys. You know, let me know what you want to see, what you want to see more of. I know trains is a big category. A lot of you guys reached out about that. So I'm going to try and make more for you, both micro scale and uh, minifigure scale. Um, I'm going to try to come out with some more skyscrapers. You know, truth be told with work kind of becoming more busy, I'm a little bit more strapped on time. But um, that being said, you know, I, I do have some weekends coming up that I'm going to try and focus and really create some, some awesome stuff. Um, I also have planned 
and still a little bit under development, but I think it'd be a lot of fun to do a build series, kind of similar to the grocery store series, where it focuses on micro scale buildings and kind of laying out a micro scale city. So that is something that I'm looking into and we'll probably get some more vehicles coming out. Um, but again, it's really up to you guys. You know, let me know what you guys want to see. Um, I'm always reading the comments, trying to think of, you know, new things that haven't been out there yet that you guys might have questions about. And, uh, you know, once again, just want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for following along. It's been an incredible journey. I can't believe how fast this thing's grown. And it's been awesome getting to know all of you guys and uh, seeing all of your creations, all of your recreations, all of your mocks, all of your builds, all of your cities, all of your landscapes, all of your epic layouts, all of your creations. It's just been awesome. So um, once again, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next time for the next video.